I know I said I'm not going to do any more of the full unit walkthroughs, but Unit 4 is my guy, okay? Unit 4 AP Chem is the easiest chapter there is in the whole thing. So I think I can fit the whole thing into one video. Of course, I'm not going to go through every single part of it because, like, I'm going to skip extremely basic stoichiometry. Because I'm assuming you should already know how to do that because if you don't know how to do that, you're basically screwed. No offense, okay? Hello everybody, I'm Karara, and today we're going to be covering the harder parts of Unit 4. Specifically, we got limiting reagent stoichiometry, we got types of chemical reactions, and we got redox reaction balancing. Now, of course, I'm going to explain all of these a lot more detailed. I'm not just going to show you this and be done. Don't worry, we're good. So let's get into the limiting reagent stoichiometry. So let us take a very typical combustion reaction, right? We got CH4 combust with oxygen, and it makes CO2 and water. All combustion reactions make CO2 and water, okay? Don't forget it. All right, let us balance this real quick. So this is going to be a 2. So you got four O2s here. This becomes a 2. Very epic. So let us say that we are given like not 20, 20, 29 grams of CH4 or methane. And we are given lack 69 grams of oxygen. Wow, okay. Now, whenever you approach stoichiometry, convert to moles. You convert to moles, everything is so much more chill, dude. You don't even have to worry about anything. So let's convert this to moles. Divide 29 by the molar mass of CH4, you get 29 over 16, and you get... Unfortunately, I can't divide decimals in my head, so we're going to use my epic phone. 1.82 or 81, I can't speak. And then 69 grams of oxygen is indeed 69 over 32. 2.15 moles. 1.6 moles. Dude, I'm so bad at rounding. How am I so bad at rounding? Okay, so now... From here, you might be like, oh wow, CH4 is actually the limiting region, right? You have less moles of CH4. No! Before you do that, you have to think about moles reaction, right? So, moles reaction is how many times the reaction takes place. So, for every oxygen molecule, the reaction takes place only half a time, right? Because you need two oxygen molecules for the reaction to happen once. That is why you have to divide each of these moles by its coefficient in the reaction. So, CH4, for example, right? Like, there's a 1, an invisible 1. So we divide 1.81 by 1, and you get that. You take the 2, divide this by 2, and what do we get? 1.08. So once you have figured out the mole reaction, then you can compare the two. And which one has less mole reaction? That's right, O2. So in this case, O2 is going to be the limiting reagent. But AP exam doesn't stop there, okay? They really want to troll you, so what they do is they ask you how much of CH4 is going to be left. So as I said before, right, 1.08 moles reaction is how many times the reaction is going to happen. So if the reaction happens 1.08 moles times, basically, that means that CH4, which, happen, which you only need one of per reaction, is just going to be 1.08 moles of CH4 used. So in order to find out how much left is we take 1.81 moles of CH4 originally and then take out how much is used up which is 1.08 mole. And if we could do math in our heads, which we can, we get that there are 73.73 moles left. And then, if you wanted to find the mass that was left over, you just convert that to mass. But remember, do all your stoichiometry in moles, okay? Just, just blindly convert to moles and you'll be Gucci. Moles are cute, I swear. Even naked mole rats, okay? I promise. Yeah, I want to pet naked mole rat. But okay, enough of that. Let us move on to types of chemical reactions. But before we talk about types of chemical reactions, I completely forgot that we had to talk about the difference between physical and chemical reactions. Wait, I think that's a perfect segue. Well, I mean, combustion is kind of a chemical reaction. But anyway, physical reaction versus chemical. I have no idea why I drew, drew a T-chart because the difference is extremely simple. Physical means compounds don't change, aka bonds are not broken or formed. So like with water boiling, none of the bonds within the molecules are broken. It still stays water even when you turn it into a gas. Okay, maybe when you make it solid it becomes ice, but it's still water, okay? It's just solid water. So all phase changes are physical, breaking something is physical, like cutting it up into tiny pieces is physical. All that stuff is physical because it still remains the same thing, it's just smaller or a different form of it. Chemical means that the compounds actually do change, and this means that bonds are broken or formed. So like the most obvious chemical change that I like to think of is like iron, right? It starts out as iron, solid, pure iron, oxygen comes in, and bonds form between the iron and the oxygen, and you get rust. So a new compound was formed, so that means that it's a chemical change. And things that might indicate a chemical change is like change in color, like the creation of a gas even though it's not boiling, that kind of thing. All right, now that we know what a chemical reaction is, let us talk about the different types of them. Dang, that segue was smooth, okay? You gotta admit. So, types of chemical reactions, you basically got your decomposition, synthesis, double replacement, I know how to spell double, and single replacement. And then there's redox, which is slightly different from all of these. Well, some of these are redox reactions. Okay, you know what? 
We'll talk about redox reactions later. So first we got decomposition. That basically means that you have A, B and that splits into like A plus B. Basically you just have one reactant and that splits into multiple products. Synthesis on the other hand is if you have A plus B and that turns into A, B. It synthesizes multiple reactants into one product. So it makes sense. Single replacement is if you have A plus like B, C yields A, C plus a B. Makes sense, right? One thing is getting replaced. The C gets moved to the A, and that's the only thing that gets changed. In double replacement, however, two things get swapped. So we got AB plus CD yields AD plus CB. So both the B and the D move to new locations. Now for synthesis, decomposition, and single replacement, there is a cool trick you can do in order to find out what mass of product is created or whatever. So look at decomposition for example, right? Let's say we're given a mass of AB and we want to find out how much A is created. Well, we know that all the A in AB is converted to lone A's, right? Like if the reaction goes to completion, all of it is going to get converted to A. So in order to find how much A is created, like what mass of it, we can use mass percent. So let us talk really quickly about mass percent. So let us say we have AgCl2 and this decomposes to Ag solid plus Cl2 gas. And we're given that we have like 46.9, because we just got to get 69 in there, grams of AgCl2. Now, I know I said always convert to moles, and you could, okay? You could convert to moles, but I'm going to teach you the coolest trick in the book of chemistry, okay? Multiply by the mass percent of Ag in order to get what Ag is created. How do you find mass percent? Okay, so we know the total molar mass of this molecule is if we add up the molar masses of Ag and Cl2, we get 107.87 plus 2 times 35.45, and you get 178.77. Just trust me, that's the molar mass of AgCl2. All right, and we want to find out what percent of that is Ag. So in the numerator, we put the Ag over the total. So what's the mass of Ag? 107.87. And we'll blammo, we are multiplying the total mass by the mass percent of Ag, and that'll give us the mass of Ag. So we basically solved the problem without having to convert to moles at all. So let us just solve this boil. All right, you ready for this epic calculating skill? And then we multiply by 107.87 and we get 29.3, no, what? 28.3, I literally cannot read. Epicness, let's go. We learned how to do mass percent, we're so cool. So cool. But anyways, all these single replacement synthesis, decomposition, those are all boring, like only one moving part. Come on, man, we gotta have two. So let's talk about double replacement because those are all the interesting ones. Double replacement. Like a couple of different types of double replacement. The ones that are the most interesting are precipitation, okay? Honestly, neutralization is kind of important. Okay, we'll talk about both of those. Precipitation first. So an example of a precipitation reaction is basically like AgCl. No, that's not a good example. Why was I doing AgCl2, dude? That was such a bad example. That's not even a thing. It's AgCl. But whatever. Let's see. So what happens if we have like NaSO4, Na2SO4, plus BaNO3, 2. And now, usually the AP will give you this and ask you what are the products, okay? And then it'll eventually ask for some more stuff, but we'll talk about it later. So the way you find out the products is basically you swap these two. It's a double replacement reaction because you could tell because it has two ions per molecule. So the ions just switch with each other. So this will result in 2 NaNO3 and then BaSO4. Now the yucky part is that this BaSO4 is no longer soluble. BaNO3 is soluble, NaSO4 is soluble, but BaSO4 not man, that guy is not soluble. So this guy is solid actually and the rest of them are aqueous. Now when you have aqueous solutions, right, basically they dissolve into their ions. So in this case, the Na2 is going to be two Na pluses, and the SO4 is going to be an SO4 two minus, and then Ba2 plus, and two NO3 minus. And then we could do the same thing for the right side because NaNO3 is aqueous, right? So it splits into its ions. So we have two Na plus plus two NO3 minus. And then the BaSO4 doesn't split up into its ions because it's actually solid, okay? So we get BaSO4. Now this right here is called the complete ionic equation, okay? But this is so lame, dude. What the heck? Why are there 2 Na plus here and 2 Na plus there? God dang it, get rid of those nonsense. 2 Na3 minus, 2 Na3 minus, get rid of that nonsense. And we are left with SO4 2 minus plus Ba2 plus yields BaSO4 solid, my dudes. Now this is a lot more epic and it's called the net ionic equation. Now I'm pretty sure on the AP exam you do not have to show the complete ionic equation to get points. You just need to show the, like, 
states of matter, and then get the net ionic equation right. Do not quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But I would just show the complete ionic equation just to be make sure it take like five seconds at most. So over here, the net ionic. Alrighty, so basically for precipitation reactions, if you want to find the net ionic equation really, really fast, just take the precipitate and split it up into its ions, right? BaSO4 is Ba2 plus and SO4 2 minus. So on the left side, you just put those ions over there. You literally do not have to care about any of, like, you don't even have to care about the reaction at all. We literally only have to know that BaSO4 is created. Then we can just write this net ionic equation. Okay, other type of neutralization. Now, neutralization reactions are kind of cool because you're taking an acid and a base, and you know that acids and bases are opposite, so they cancel each other out. But how do they do this? Let us check it out. So, we know that an acid is like HA, and then a base is going to be like BOH, because basically bases have like an OH ion, and then that gets pushed out. All right, so when these react, basically what happens is that this is an A minus, right? Because it's paired with an H plus. This B is a B plus. Ah, oh, these grades, my mom would kill me if I had those grades, okay? But anyway, this is a B plus. So, our B plus is going to pair up with our A minus, right? Because it's basically a double replacement reaction, so they swap with each other. So we have BA, and then our OH minus pairs with our H plus. And what does that give you? That gives you H2O. Dang, dude, that's crazy stuff. But H2O is not an ion or an aqueous solution or an ionic solid. It is a liquid, okay? So the rest of these are aqueous but H2O is a liquid. And we cannot split H2O up, okay? It's not aqueous, but we could split the rest of them up. So the complete ionic equation would be H plus plus A minus plus B plus plus OH minus. Yield B plus plus A minus plus H2O liquid. And this is the complete ionic equation. However, however, we could get rid of stuff. So this basically becomes H plus plus, I can't type pluses, plus OH minus yields H2O. And this is N-E-E, -E. no, N-I-E, yes. You want to know life hack, okay? If it's a neutralization reaction, this right here is always going to be your net ionic equation no matter what. So, if you really are too lazy to do it out, pretty epic. All right, the last reaction we got to talk about are redox reactions, and those guys are yucky as heck. Alrighty, I found this very epic redox reaction online. Let us figure out how to balance this boy real good. So basically, the reason why this is called a reduction oxidation reaction or redox reaction is because electrons are being transferred. And the way I like to think about it is like electrons are negative charge, right? So if you put an electron on something, it gets even less charge because you're adding negative stuff that's like subtracting charge. That's why it's reduction. You're reducing the charge. And then oxidation is just losing electrons because that helps you gain charge. What was the mnemonic my teacher used? It was like... Oil rig, oil rig, right? Because then you get oil, oxidize means lose electrons, and rig, reduction means gain electrons. But anyways, so the way we start with this kind of thing is we have to figure out the oxidation states of everything. So we know that oxygen is always 2 minus. So we have 6 minus from the oxygen. So in order to get a net charge of 2 minus, what do we got to make our S? That's right, 4 plus. Then same thing for here, we get 7 plus on the MN, then 6 plus over here, and then we got our... 4 plus over here. So now we got to split this up into half reactions. And half reactions are basically like with the same element from its beginning state to its end state. So for sulfur, we start with S, right? So it's SO3, 2 minus. And then in order to get to 6 plus, right, we have to lose 2 electrons. So it goes to SO4, 2 minus, plus 2 E minus. Because if we have 6 plus, we add 2 E minus, it goes to 4 plus, which is what we want. The other half reaction is MnO4 minus. And we want to go from 7 plus to 4 plus, okay? So we got to add 3 electrons here. And then this gives us MnO2. All right, epic. Now, if we add these two equations together, the electrons don't cancel out, and we're just going to have a random electron here, which we do not want, because electrons are not going to be floating on our watch, okay? So what we got to do is we got to multiply these so that the electrons cancel out. So what's the least common multiple of 2 and 3? How do we make them cancel out? Multiply the first equation by 3. Multiply the second equation by 2. And we will get the following, 3SO3 2 minus plus 2MnO4 minus yields 3SO4 2 minus plus 2MnO2. And we see that this becomes 6 electrons on the right side and 6 electrons on the left side, so they cancel out. Okay, so now we're left with this. This is like the only important thing we had to worry about now. Let us erase all the other nonsense. Okay, so right now, it looks pretty good, right? We got all our electrons balanced, very cool, very sus stuff. 
but our oxygens are not balanced. We have like 9 plus 8, 17 oxygens on this side, and only like 12 plus 4, only 16 oxygens on that side. That's so lame. Where did that other oxygen go? So the way we add back in oxygens is by adding an H2O. Hooray, right, now we have 17 oxygens on both sides. This is very cool. But now we have misplaced hydrogens. Oh no, what are we going to do? That's right, we add H plus ions. So... H plus ions is easy. In order to have two on both sides, two hydrogen on both sides, you just add two H plus over here. Okay, we just balanced the redox reaction. However, there's only four acidic solution because H plus is acidic, right? But what happens if we wanted it in basic solution? Now this is a really fun trick and it's really easy. All you have to do is add OH minus. And you want to cancel out all the H pluses because basic does not like H plus. So we add two OH minus here and then add two OH minus here. And these things become water. So now we have two H2O. However, there's a water here, we can cancel this out, this becomes 1H2O, and boom, we got H2O plus 3, SO3, 2 minus, I'll just write it out. And hooray, we have balanced it for a basic solution. Alrighty, that's basically all you gotta know for chemical reactions. You got your types of reactions, and you got your redox reactions, and how to balance them. But like, honestly, this chapter is all about stoichiometry, and the only thing you have to know about stoichiometry is convert to moles if you're ever in doubt. And once you got moles, you can do whatever the heck you want, because... Then you just use all the coefficients of the reactions, all that good stuff. So, you should be Gucci, okay? Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. That's all I got for today's video. That's basically all of Unit 4 that you gotta know. If you guys want more of these chem walkthroughs, chem reviews, chem tips, whatever, just let me know and I will make more. A couple of you guys commented on one of my videos and that made me feel pretty good. So, that's why I am making these, okay? So, support the channel more, comment more, make me feel good more so I make more videos. <laughs> Dude, it feels so much like I'm trying to... You know what? We're done, okay? Thank you guys for watching again. See you guys next time.